Welcome ladies and gentlemen to the VTEC Applications Lab. Today we present you a short movie about fiber coupling. In confocal Raman microscopy you always have to in some way couple the microscope itself with the laser and the spectrometers. In VTEC we always do this using fibers and we've been doing that for almost 20 years so we know exactly how this is best done. Today I want to present to you how, this, how effective this is and which advantages you gain from it. We start with the single mode optical fibers. The single mode optical fibers are used to couple the lasers with the microscopes. In order to show you the effectiveness of this coupling, we will first measure the power out of the laser and the power through the fiber. Since I will be working with free beam uh, 532 nanometer laser, I'll be using the safety, uh, laser safety glasses for this. To measure the power, we've got a power meter here set to 532 nanometer for detection. And if I put the head right in front of it, uh, right in front of it, then we see we get about 76 milliwatts free beam laser power. Now the question is, how much of this power do we get through the fiber? For this, we simply insert one side of the fiber into the uh, into the laser head here, nice and gently. Right, it's in there. I screw it on. On the other side of the fiber, I use a fiber adapter on my measurement head and I attach the other side of the fiber, which would normally be attached to your microscope. I attach this to the power meter head. Right, if I now open the laser shutter, we can measure the power transmitted and we see it's about 62 milliwatts. So the transmission efficiency is extremely high. But of course the question remains, remains, how reliable is it? For this we can simply say, okay, let's take the fiber out again and put it back in. So I close the laser shutter, detach my fiber, very gently take it out. You see, I get the fiber out here. I reinsert the fiber. Nice and gentle. That's all done. Open the laser shutter again and we see 62 milliwatts. So it's highly reliable even though I mechanically move things. For you as a customer, however, you'll never have to worry about it because we mount a laser safety cap to it. The laser safety cap is fixed with a little screw here on the side. And that means you have to use tools to remove it that makes it uh, laser safe. Once we have this, and of course in a real microscope, you'd have a similar construction on the other side, on the microscope side, then you can take off your laser safety glasses because it's class one laser safe now. In addition, you can put your laser to whichever position you want to. So for example, I can now take this laser and whoop, lift it up onto this shelf and you see we still got 62 milliwatts. With the laser sitting up here, you never have to worry about it. You can open and close the laser shutter in here, uh, touch the laser power, but otherwise you don't have to worry about it. The other advantage is that you can put it even further away because if you have an air-cooled laser or fan-cooled laser like an argon ion, this produces a lot of vibration and a lot of heat. And this heat can, if it's very close to your system, have an influence on your setup. With a spatial separation, as you can achieve with the setup, there's no problem with that at all. The system, of course, can also be equipped with multiple different lasers, as you see over here. And these lasers can also be equipped, be equipped with a true power module. The true power module allows you to measure the laser power right inside the fiber. And this you can control using the software. And I will quickly demonstrate this by using the software. With the video control app, you can choose which laser you want to work with as well as its power. So for example, for the 785 nanometer laser, we can choose 212 milliwatts and we get 212 milliwatts. Or we can choose a lower power, like 22.5 milliwatts, and we get 22.5 milliwatts. You, of course, also can change the laser wavelength by just selecting the other laser here. The system now automatically changes the laser wavelength. And also here, you've got the possibility to choose your laser power. For example, 42.5 milliwatts, and we get 42.5 or 1.1 milliwatts and we get 1.1 milliwatts. You can also go low, lower laser powers even 0.32 milliwatts and we get 0.32 milliwatts. The big advantage is in addition that with this true power module you set the power without the shutter being open. That means you don't expose your sample to laser power while you find the right setting. 
So with the true power, you can set an arbitrary power within the fiber in milliwatts. It's not few relative values, such as when you use neutral density filters, so you get 50%, 10%, 5% or something like this. It's absolute value in milliwatts. That's got some big advantages. For example, if any misalignment ha should happen, and we saw that the probability here is extremely low, but should anything happen, then this is completely independent from it. You still get the power in milliwatts. With a relative value, you just put a filter and you don't know what's happening before or after, so you don't have any defined reading. In addition, if your system runs for 10-20 years, we do see some laser aging. Yeah. Everyone has that, that's just the way things go. But with laser aging you might lose something like 10% of your laser power. Now if you have a relative reading, just as using neutral density filter, then you will get an error. With an absolute reading, getting the milliwatt value gives you still the correct value. The adjustment here is just made differently to open it a little bit, uh, up a little bit more and to give you the correct laser power. So this setting gives you extreme high level of reproducibility of your experiment. If you do an experiment today, then the laser power value is saved in your data along with all the other experimental setup. So the, the grating position, the grating used, it's saved as the absolute power determination. So you've got an objective way to reproduce your experiment 10 years from now. The single mode optical fibers used, no matter whether you use true power or the non-true power version, are always polarization maintaining. That means you enter the microscope with a fixed polarization. In addition, you've got a diffraction limiter point light source at the output side of the fiber, which means you enter the microscope with a diffraction limiter point light source. This, of course, can also be achieved using a free beam setup. If you think of a big optical table, you've got a bunch of mirrors to guide your beam, you've got optics for beam shapening, you might have a spatial filter, um, and then you can achieve a diffraction limited point light source with a fixed polarization. However, each of these elements will cost you a little bit of throughput. And in addition, each of these elements is a source of misalignment and this is a source of error. So you got to be very sure that everything is perfectly aligned and that not one single mirror along the path is slightly misaligned. These systems now sometimes are shrunk a little, put in a box and then it's called your Raman microscope. But in fact, it contains the same complexity and the same intrinsic problems as your big optical problems. With the setup of the fiber, you have here the fiber coupling and I showed you how reliable this is. You've got the diffraction limited polarization maintained point light source entering your microscope. In the microscope you image this now onto your sample to get a diffraction limited illumination. The scattered light is collected and giving you an image of the diffraction limited point light source in the detection plane and this is then collected with our photonic fibers. So in summary using single mode optical fibers for beam delivery and photonic fibers for detection you get systems with, in combination with the appropriate system design, gives you the highest throughput. It gives you diffraction limited excitation and detection. So Raman images with lateral resolutions of 300 nanometers is no problem. With 900 nanometer set, uh, set resolution is no problem. And at the same time you get the highest sensitivity. So with all the same settings you can for example then measure the fourth, uh, fourth order of silicon if that's your, uh, your tool to measure the sensitivity. In addition the photonic fibers allowed us to re-evaluate our design of the spectrometers. And we did so. And then we optimized it to keep these spectrometers at the cutting edge of technology. So not sticking with the same design, but re-evaluating it whenever new technology is there to keep them at the cutting edge. And this gives you highest throughput, best spectral resolution, best beam shade. So your, your Raman bands exactly look like they th in theory should look like and in combination with the cameras, the highest speed. In summary, you get a system with gives you the highest speed, best resolution and highest sensitivity for your Confoco Raman images and that's due to the fiber-based system design.